Hi friends, welcome back to another Rafting Magazine quick lesson. And in this lesson, we're gonna be talking about valves. Valves get damaged in a number of ways. So it could be, uh, you could have cracked a valve by dropping a boat. Um, your pressure relief valve might be leaking or uh, you might find that the valve stem is sticking or you're having trouble with that. Um, happens a lot of times when you get gummed up and things like that. You're gonna need a couple things. First thing's gonna be your valve wrench. Uh, you're also going to need some Q-tips, paper towel, get some gloves just so you don't get stuff on your hands and some 303. So with all these, we're gonna dive in and we're gonna fix some valves up. So the very first thing you need to do is you need to take this valve off. And to do that, make sure you find the right side of your valve wrench. There's usually two sides to it, but with these C7 valves, uh, these are Leafield valves, and you just wanna take that pointy part, put it in there. And I had pre-loosened this, but it might take a little bit to get these things uh, loose. And one little trick for it is to inflate your boat and then just loosen it a little bit and then uh, deflate your boat and then pull these off. So these just screw right off. With most rafts, the pressure relief valve is gonna sit right here. Uh, it does in this airboat as well, but if you have an airboat, they have these internal bladders and the pressure relief valve is on the inside of that bladder. So uh, this is just an extra step for airboats. What we have to do is we actually have to unzip the PVC shell to get at it. And there's a little split ring right here. Take that split ring out, set it aside where you're not gonna lose it, and then unzip the floor. So it doesn't take much to get to the pressure relief valve, but just like the other valve, you're gonna see this is the other side with pressure relief valves. They usually use the other side of your valve wrench. You place it on top and I always place my hand over it, cover the valve, and then you give that thing a twist so it pops off. Now that you have your two valves removed, you have both your pressure relief valve and your standard inflation valve. With the inflation valve, they always come with these little washers. Make sure you set that aside so you don't lose that. You're gonna to wanna to use that later. Um, now, starting with the pressure relief valve, this is gonna be your most common valve that's gonna have some issues. It comes with a little screen that's already put in top. I just removed that first. You're gonna find that over the years, your pressure relief valve is gonna be one of your major issues, especially if you're in a dirty or the rivers with a lot of turbidity, a lot of sediment in it. Um, so the whole point of the pressure relief valve is just when there's enough pressure, it pops open. So you can see that it just moves up, releases all the pressure. Now, what happens with these valves is even with the screen installed on them, you're gonna find that there's a lot of sediment that gets caught in this thing and it'll get make its way through the screen and work its way inside there. Best thing that you can do to help clean these things out and make sure that they work properly is flip them over so that you're on the inside here. Take a little bit of 303 and just squirt a little bit of 303 in there. And then just press on it multiple times to get that all nice and lubricated. And it should lubricate the valve stem when you flip it over. But another thing that you may have to do is stick a Q-tip in there. And this is why we got the Q-tips from before. Just run it around that, press it down a little bit, run it around, flip it over. And if you can get the Q-tip under there, just get it as in there as much as possible to clean out all the gunk that's gonna be inside there. And then make sure you continue to lubricate it and it should be all good to go. So that way you can take the screen, reinstall that screen, it just presses right in there. Make sure you get some 303 on that screen. It'll keep the uh, seal all nice and tight so that no more sediment's getting in there. The next piece we're gonna be concerned with is gonna be our normal inflation valve. So this valve is super easy. You can see how it works. It's just got a little rubber boot here and it has a little valve stem in there and you can give it a twist and it'll stay open. That's how obviously you deflate your boat. So what happens with these is you will get a bunch of gunk inside of them and most of the time this boot might start to wear out or it might get some mildew on it, it might get dirty. And if you start to get sand and grit and little particles in here, that means that's entering into your tube. So you might wanna clean your tube out, but Ultimately, this boot is the whole key to the system. So what we're gonna do, again, take some 303. We're gonna squirt some 303 on there. Now you can take a paper towel and kind of rub that in to the boot. 
so that the whole boot becomes lubricated. The next part of cleaning out your inflation valve is to just go to the top here, squirt a little bit of 303 in there. Once you do that, you can just press it down multiple times. That's gonna lubricate the valve stem and make sure that the valve stem isn't degrading or breaking down, but it's also going to get on the inside of the little boot. So we're gonna press this down and you wanna take your Q-tip and just run it on the inside of this little boot, clean it out, clean off that stuff. And it's also gonna, since you'll have a bunch of 303 on your gloves or your hands, you are just going to rub that around there and you wanna make sure that dries really well before you reinstall this uh, valve back in your boat. But that's all you gotta do to clean it. So then make sure you take that washer, put that washer back on and then you can reinstall this and you can reinstall your other valve into the floor. So this works on every tube and every valve. So your tubes, your thwarts and your floors, you're gonna wanna make sure you do this to all of them. I do it once a year just to make sure that everything is all good and make sure that these valves are working. And when I take them apart, I can see if the outer wall of the valve is cracked. If that is, you're gonna lose air through there. So this is the most common problem with deflation from boats is that these, these things fall apart. Um, and in addition to pinholes, of course. So if it's, you might have pinholes in your boat or you might wanna check your valves. The valves being the easiest thing to fix. Uh, you just unscrew them, grab a new valve, screw it back in, you're good to go. And I also always recommend in your uh, repair kit that you just carry an extra inflation valve and an extra pressure relief valve. If you're on long multi-days like the Grand Canyon, you're definitely gonna want something like this just so that when you get in there, uh, you're gonna have these extra parts when you need them or any river trip. I've had plenty of trips where they just fall apart and break. Now that your valves are all clean, the last step you have is to just take these valves, reinstall them just the opposite way, use the valve wrench, crank them down as tight as they can get, then inflate your boat and give them another half turn or so until they're really, really tight in there and you're not gonna have any leakage from your valves. That's how you maintain your valves. If you have questions about that, uh, let me know. Feel free to drop a comment. Always happy to tell you uh, what information I know and what I do to maintain my valves and make sure they are in proper working order. So we'll see you next time on Rafting Magazine.